What's up guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at the BenQ EW3280 Entertainment Monitor. Before we get into the video, if you're new to the channel and want to keep up with the latest in AV technology and in movies too, then tap the subscribe button for new weekly videos. First off, shout out to BenQ for sending this over to us for review. We'll leave links in the video's description for additional information or if you want to pick it up. So this is meant to be an entertainment monitor. Obviously you can use it for PC work, but I think BenQ is pushing the fact that this is a 4K monitor with HDR support, so it will be great for games and movie watching. We're going to take a look at how it performs with video watching today, but first, let's get it unboxed. Inside, we get a disc with drivers and some documentation, a USB-C cable, the power cord, an HDMI cable, a remote control, and the stand. To mount the stand on the monitor, you'll have to loosen up the screws here. Now grab the back part of the stand, which has built-in wire management, take that and slide it underneath the monitor. Tighten down the screws you loosened up earlier, and then you're going to take the base and screw that down here as well. Now since we're not mounting this on the wall, there is a cover that you can snap on the back to give it a clean look. I found the stand to be pretty sturdy, but it does wiggle a little if you move it around. As for connections, you'll find a 3.5mm audio output, two HDMI ins, display port, and a USB-C connection. Up top are 2W stereo speakers and a 5 watt woofer behind this mesh grill. On the bottom corner, you'll find the volume knob, and if you swing the monitor around, you'll find two custom buttons, the navigation control, and the power button. For setup, I'll be hooking this up to my PC using the HDMI input. I won't be using the included stand, as I will be mounting it to my desk. Now let's take a quick look at some of the menu options. Here you have the input selections. Next are some basic controls. Brightness, Contrast, and Sharpness Lighters. Some of these options will be grayed out if they can't be changed. Here's some Aspect Ratio settings and Overscan. If you want to add more sharpness to it, you can bump up the Resolution slider, which I would keep at zero. And here's Smart Focus, which will let you pick a part of the screen to set your focus on. I suppose since the screen is so large, you might have a hard time keeping your mind on the task at hand. Under color, there's a few options for the most accurate profile. There's Rec. 709, and there's even an M Book setting, which is supposed to minimize differences between the monitor and your MacBook's display. For HDR, there's a few options here that we'll take a look at later. And under Advanced, you can change Gamma, Hue, Saturation, and the PC range. Okay, now let's have a quick listen to some of the audio presets. Next is the eye care section. This has a feature called Brightness Intelligence Plus. This basically adjusts the brightness and the color temperature so you don't have eye fatigue. There's a sensor on the front of the display that will automatically make the adjustments according to your room surroundings, which you can find too in the settings here. Under Custom Key, 
This is the section where you can assign a shortcut to those two buttons on the back of the display. Under system, there's just some general settings you can change and you can see what signal is coming into the monitor. And that's pretty much it for the settings. Seeing how this is being touted as an entertainment monitor with a remote control, 4K resolution, and HDR support, it should be noted that this is a VESA certified display HDR 400 monitor. So it's going to have 400 nits of brightness, which is 50% brighter than your standard definition content. But you also won't be at max levels for HDR10 material. This is basically the entry point for a monitor that supports HDR. Screen size is a 32 inch IPS display with the PPI of 138. It's got support for 95% of DCI-P3, so your movie watching should be pretty good. Refresh rate is 60 hertz and response time is five milliseconds. Now here on the channel, we cover a lot of audio and video products and not so much computer related hardware. So most of my usage has been with 4K material. Therefore, I did most of my testing with movies and TV shows. One thing I found confusing was how HDR material was handled. While I was watching Stranger Things on Netflix in HDR, I noticed no matter what HDR option I chose, right after selecting one of the three profiles, it would start off bright and vibrant, and then after a few seconds, the monitor would just dim down significantly. I found that the display HDR mode to be the dimmest with black levels that looked muddy and more grayish rather than black. The game mode was the brightest with the most contrast and seemed to handle peak brightness the best. The cinema mode fell in between display and game modes. Shadow detail was easier to see, but it's not as bright as the game mode. If you're watching something that isn't natively in HDR, you can emulate HDR by selecting one of the three HDR presets. Now while in HDR you can't change the brightness, contrast, or color mode settings to fine tune the image, you kinda get what you get. That being said, I thought movies and TV shows in 4K HDR was acceptable and in the same league as say an entry level TV from Samsung or LG. Although with an actual TV set you'll have more granular control over the picture settings. But I thought performance was good, it produces a very clean crisp image, details are razor sharp and the color was rich. I found playing games to be a better experience on this over movie watching. Details were even better with more definition and colors had more pop and vibrancy. Now this isn't a high-end gaming monitor, but I found response for me personally totally fine for the stuff I like to play. If you're a hardcore gamer, you'll likely be looking at something else. As for off-angle viewing, unless you're sitting at some extreme angle, the colors didn't change that much. The blacks do lighten up a bit if you're really far off to the sides, but really, who's watching this far off from the screen anyways? Audio-wise, the built-in speakers gets the job done, but I'm sure you'll be pairing this with some sort of desktop speaker setup if you want your audio to match the big screen visuals. It does get loud, but I felt stereo separation wasn't all that wide. It felt more centrally focused rather than spreading outwards towards the sides. I really did like having the 32 inch size which makes my video editing for this channel a breeze as there is more screen real estate. You can just fit so much more on the screen. As mentioned before, this is like an all around monitor with casual entertainment being the focus here. So while it's not the best in any one area, it handles your movie watching, game playing and even video editing without any major issues. Now at the time of this video, the BenQ is priced at $7.99. If you want to check out some more specs or to pick it up, I'll leave some links for it down below in the video's description. So those are my thoughts on this monitor from BenQ. Have you guys seen it and what do you guys think? Leave a comment and let us know. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys again in the next one.